We haven't had a lot of luck finding a good place, swinging it tonight. This is bad. I woke up and walked out and did my walk around and there's this truck that's just kind of jammed up under this trailer. He sure hit it. He missed us by three feet. Cody, there's two men in there. Two men in there. Man, those people are lucky they are alive. Yep. We started our day out today with about 650 miles to ride. We were leaving Salvisa, Kentucky after having an awesome week with Isaac and Bree. We kept that all off by leaving the campground this morning and going and taking a last stop tour at the Jim Beam Distillery. If you guys didn't see that video, we'll put a link to it at the end because it was pretty incredible. And now it's about two o'clock and we are headed to Arkansas with about 550 miles to go. We said we were gonna stop doing these long travel days, Ange. What the heck? In we are spreading it out over two days. We knew that we would be able to get on down the road, get a big chunk of the day out. Monday is eclipse day. We are heading into the heart of it. We're going to be in the path of full totality, which we've never witnessed. Don't worry, this is not going to be an eclipse video. There's plenty of other stuff going on besides the eclipse. We got a lot to show you. But we have heard in this small area that we're going to They've been sold out of hotels for months. People are renting out their front yards for people to put RVs on. It's yeah. estimated there's gonna be like 6,000 boats on the lake, which is absolutely crazy. So we know that there's gonna be a lot of traffic. We know it's gonna be hard to find fuel. We know when all these people leave, they're gonna take a lot of fuel with them. So we gotta be cognizant of keeping our tanks full. There's a lot going on this week. We wanted to allow plenty of time tomorrow to travel, so we want to get the big chunk out of the way today. I know that we have a lot of people that have reached out that are going to be in Arkansas during the eclipse and wanted to meet up. And any other time, we'd be happy to. This is just going to be such a quick trip that it just wouldn't work out. And we weren't sure exactly where we were going to be at any one time since we're home. So it was just better for us to say i don't think it's going to work this time but we'll catch you guys on the road later when you were sleeping there was a blue jay that flew directly in, in front of me when I was going like 65 or more. <laughs> How did you see it was a blue jay at 65? He was, he was... He was that close? He was that close. So much so that I went, ah! And then I, I thought, okay, that's not smart. <laughs> oh, you tried to dodge him? I think you scared him more than he scared you. <laughs> like, no birds were harmed today. But our Super Duty had a small casualty, but I'll clean that up when we get there. This blonde jumps in the saddle without having had previous experience before riding a horse. She jumps on the back of this horse. She's going. It's going at a pretty steady gallop. She starts slipping. And she's slipping. She's got her arms around its neck, but still she's sliding down. The horse just keeps running. Her head starts banging against the concrete. I mean, she's just at the mercy of this horse. It's hooves and it's just, it's horrible. But before she blacked out, Joe Bob came over and unplugged the Walmart horse. <laughs> <laughs> she lost consciousness. <laughs> Man, 
Man, we just saw a really, really bad situation here on Interstate 40. There was a rollover in the median with like a F-150 and a Imagine travel trailer. It was a kind of a horrific incident there, but it did look like all the family was out and walking around and waiting on, you know, a tow truck or or whatever's going on. I'm at a, whoever you are, I hope you're okay. And for the rest of us, it's just that constant reminder to be safe and be on your toes because doesn't take much. Doesn't take much and it's scary. Things can flip upside down in a hurry. So hopefully those folks are okay and they get their issue resolved as quick as possible and get back on the road. For the rest of you and for us, be safe out there, guys. You know how a southerner says namaste? They say, you gonna evacuate? Namaste here. I've talked before about it, how if we had the diesel, we'd just get a fleet fuel card and we'd slide right through the trucker lanes and things would be nice and easy. Having gas, getting fuel sometimes is a complexity. We've talked about that before. Ideally, we travel like we have here lately where it's like a 200, 230 mile trip and we just fill up before we leave and no problem because every time you pull into a gas pump, it's a risk for an accident. Either you hitting the pump or someone hitting you while you're sitting there. Today, we got 650 to drive. We just did our second fuel stop. Something I like to try to do is to stop outside of big cities. So right now we're just outside of Jackson, Tennessee, which is you know another hour or so down to Memphis. I know I don't want to stop in Memphis because a lot of times those gas stations aren't nearly as populated, especially during peak hours. And a lot of times you can get in and out a lot easier. We've made two stops today, both kind of in between big cities and it worked out great. Slide right in, slide right out. They had nice turnarounds around the back. You might pay a little bit more for your gas. It might take some of that accident risk out. Those things always look like they're driving backwards. They do always look like they're driving backwards. That's the weirdest looking thing. What kind of food do racehorses like to eat? Fast food. Well, that makes sense. Does it? No. <laughs> We haven't had a lot of luck finding a good place, swinging it tonight. So it's totally worth paying whatever this is gonna be. We'll see. Home sweet home. Good morning folks and welcome to travel day number two. Just had a little overnight stop here at the truck stop. Something that bothers us when we do overnights is right now we don't have a way to run our coffee pot. We really enjoy it in the morning but everybody needs their caffeine, right? So I wanted to share this guys with you. I've been using it for a couple of years. It's called Morning Buzz Energy. You get it on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. If you're familiar with Advocare Spark or things like that, this is pretty much the same thing, but it's quite a bit cheaper. It's just a scoop and a cup of water and it gives you kind of the caffeine boost in the morning that coffee would normally give you without having to run the coffee pot. We like to use it in boondocking situations like this or on gym days. I like to take this with a little citrulline and beta alanine, make my own pre-workout. Works great, used it a long time. So we're gonna have our morning buzz drinks and we're gonna hit the road. talk about a close call we're doing our walk around this morning and there's a trailer here next to me <laughs> this is bad I woke up and walked out and did my walk around and there's this truck that's just kind of jammed up under this trailer he sure hit it Cody, there's two men in there it's about a 2003 Chevrolet wide 22 blue f350 she's like don't you stay on scene because the officer is going to be there in a minute A crash this morning and we thought it was just somebody looking up to a semi-trailer because sometimes they skid or make a lot of noise. Sometimes they fall and it makes this loud noise. It scared me because they were unresponsive and they we thought... Missed, they missed our truck by three feet. Oh yeah, they barely. Three feet from smacking our truck. So we called 
the uh, local police are coming out. We're going to wait here and, you know, sign any reports or be witness to whatever we can. But I don't as safe as we try to be, sometimes things are just out of your control. And as far as we can tell, they didn't. The guys aren't injured like they could have been really easily, yeah. really easily. Yeah. That but shipping, the top of the, or the bottom of that shipping container is in their windshield. Another message to say, <sighs> stay safe out there. That's scary. I, out of our control. I hope that they're okay. But we're gonna we're gonna get closed up here. We're gonna go wait in the truck and uh, see what the officers need. And we'll see you guys on the road. Man, those people are lucky. They are alive. Yep. I heard it and I thought it was just somebody that dropped a, I thought it was just somebody that dropped a trailer or was hooking up and slid their trailer back, you know, because a lot of times they'll hook up out of yeah. these truck stops, they'll slide them back and it sounds like well, a car wreck. I tried to look and out the window and I saw him like, that truck almost looks like he's under that trailer, but I thought, no, surely he's just shining the light. I just glanced at it and I thought, oh, it's probably somebody just checking receipts and windshields to make sure everybody's paid up, you know, like a security or something. I'm just kind of glad the sheriff got here quick. He's jammed under that trailer. They're going to have to raise the leg if they want to get him out. I think they're calling in backup because they're not, this guy's not getting out without help. They're going to have to lift it. He missed us by three feet. Like that was almost our truck mm -hmm. and probably would have heavily damaged the trailer too. Y'all see it happen? No, sir. We were inside our rig here and heard it happen and walked There's out. And, noise. Yeah, man, he, we got lucky. He missed us by a few foot. He's going to have him a bad day. If they'd have been in a car, they'd be dead. But you can look at these front tires on this truck and they're swelling out like they're about to pop. Well, I bet that trailer is loaded and the whole weight of that trailer, as he drove under, it lifted the trailer and the trailer squashed the truck. We didn't expect to be here this long. No. But we're kind of blocked in at this point. We're going to go talk to the sheriff. Once they get done doing their thing here, they're very busy at the yeah. moment. Um, we need to do a good walk around because we kind of pulled our slides in and rushed out and made calls. and We were very distracted, and so yeah. this is a good time for us to go reset, take a breath, once we get the all clear to leave, and we're going to go just do a couple more walk arounds. Check everything over one more time because it was just such a rush this morning. The, the good news is it looks like both the people in the truck that hit the trailer are okay. He missed us by two, three, four foot right here. I mean, it's scary. it could have been a really bad morning for us too, but luckily everybody's okay. Yeah. Hopefully they can get this resolved quickly. While your initial reaction may be to run up and stick your head in the truck and make sure everybody's okay, you know, this time of morning, single vehicle accident, you don't know if somebody's got a, a gun or a, a knife or a bat or something like that. They may be afraid. They may be intoxicated on something that makes them a little bit crazy. So we tried to stay back from a reasonable distance, get a visual, get a plate number, get a call in and let the professionals handle it because the world's crazy these days and you don't want to get caught in the crossfire. Cody kind of got on to me because I did poke my head in there to see if they were breathing. Um, and they were. So at that, and didn't look like any blood or any obvious injuries. How, I don't know. Um, I don't, they barely. That, that container is through the windshield of the truck. They've got, their dash is pushed back. Slightly more speed and they, they would have been in trouble. The officer that I spoke to on the phone told me to stay back and so we did. And we just kind of watched him from afar and, and made sure. Now they're handcuffing him now. The sheriff's department, I will say, responded quick. From yeah, the time you hung up to the time somebody was here was maybe three to five minutes. And then the ambulance and the fire truck and all those guys showed up immediately after. So those guys did great. One of my best friends in the world is a police officer and we are big supporters of the police and fire and obviously the military. So this is just a great example of what a what a good sheriff's department can do and how quick they can respond. What was a little scary is when they first got here and the driver was trying to get out of his truck or right before the sheriff got here, the guy was trying to get out of his truck and we're right here. And like he said, you don't know if they're in their right mind. We don't know what this guy's on. You don't know what's in the truck. Cody shared with you our travel day secret for caffeine. We didn't need it this morning. We did it, but we didn't need it. That 
That was scary in a wake up call for sure. Glad everyone's okay once again. We're gonna top off, we're gonna hit the road and we'll see you guys down the road.